So hi and welcome to another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you Quas settings or quality of service settings that you can apply to your router to improve bandwidth performance on certain applications like Netflix or for gaming to make sure that your game is getting the most priority on the network or just general internet traffic. This is generally good to put in place if you're having a lot of issues with bandwidth that you share in a house with a few people that are watching Netflix or they're gaming or they're downloading things and overall you find out the bandwidth's being taken for those other applications and you've got something that you want to give a priority to. Companies use this quite a lot for things like VoIP, voice. I'm going to show you you can bring this into your home to make sure you get the best service you can for certain applications. So as you know my channel is themed more on gaming here so I'm going to theme this on the gaming aspects of it to give you an idea of how you could prioritize the traffic for Apex, Fortnite, PUBG or any other games going forward. It can be applied to anything here so it's not specifically just those games. Principles work the same as they do for games as they do for a phone or for internet browsing or for downloading traffic, stuff like that. So I'm going to show you here is my settings on my Advanced Tomato R7000 router. A lot of routers do have quality of service settings, just look in the menu, but they don't come on every single router. But if you do have them, they are certainly worth using, but they can be a little bit complex, so you can get mixed results. But certainly worth looking at if you're having some issues with bandwidth. So one of the things you'll need to do, and we're going to show it here on this R7000, is you'd have to enable quality of service. You have to tick that box. What we have here is prioritize small packets with these control flags. So what these are, are you've got here an acknowledgement flag. This is for TCP, a synchronization flag, a finish, and a reset. So basically what things would do is they say, give me an acknowledgement to say, can start sending your data, and then you'll start saying, I'm ready. And then they'll say, cool, let me send it. But we're going to turn those off. We're going to leave only acknowledge and the other three can be turned off. That seems to be the general preference here. ICMP traffic is things like ping requests. We're going to leave that on. No ingress quas for UDP. A lot of people turn this on, but I'm just going to leave it off for the minute. This will stop potentially your router being flooded with UDP requests. I'm not going to go too complex into this. This should be a fairly easy tutorial for people who just want to know how to improve things like their gaming traffic, for instance. We're going to leave the reset class when changing settings enabled. But what you have here is something called default class. Now what the class is, is this is the services that you want to define. So people might class it as one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. We're going to define it as it's done here for a service, voice over IP and game, remote, web traffic, media traffic like Netflix, internet surfing traffic and messenger, mail, file like file exchange, I guess, peer to peer, which is torrents, things like that. And then slow, which means I don't care. Just get it there eventually. It's not really a priority. And we'll go through this a little bit more in a minute. So I'll show you where we get those classifications from. QDIS scheduler. To be fair, I'm not really sure exactly what I'd use that for. So I'm just going to leave it default. But put it in the comments if you know. It'll certainly be useful for other people to understand if it's really an issue. And if it should be set to something other than FQ codal. I'm using a modem, but if you have DSL, this, project, this shows an overhead for the bandwidth, as far as I'm aware. And at the moment, a lot of people just leave it on and on. So I just leave it there. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting. This is outbound rates. What outbound rates are is also known as upload speed. So what we're going to need to do is go to speedtest.net and find out what the upload speed is of your network and the download speed of your network. So we can apply some settings here on this maximum bandwidth. So we go to www.speedtest.net. I'll put the links in the description for this. And if you click go, what we'll see now is a speed test showing us the download speed and the upload speed. Just let that finish. So once you've run your test, you'll end up with the top part here that says 9 milliseconds or whatever your response millisecond rate is to the server. The download, which is minus 275 meg, and my upload, which is 21 meg. So we're going to need those numbers. We'll take those with you so you know what they are. What we need to understand now is the maximum upload bandwidth which was 21 meg for me so what we need to use is get a calculator so we need to do 20 meg so we're going to do 21 and we're going to times that by 1024 which gives us the kilobits per second so 21,504 what we're going to need to do is just open up something like notepad so what we're going to need to do is write down that figure 21504 basically and we're going to need to take 10% off it which is 21 2150, something like that. But let me show you how to do that. 21,000. We times that by 01, 10%. There's 10%, 2150. 
2150. So if we put in 21504 minus the 10%, 2150, that is our kilobits per second. And what we did there was we got the maximum kilobits per second, which was 21,504, and we took 10% off for an overhead. So you're only using the maximum 90% of your bandwidth. That's to account for some droppage when potentially it's busy, and also just to make sure you've got a little bit of extra above. So what we need to put in here is 19,354. That gives me my maximum outbound, again, was upload. I'll explain these that come back in a little second. And now we need to do the inbound, which was 375 for me, 375 meg. Again, times that by 1024 to get the kilobits, 38, about oh, 384,000. So same thing here, times by 0.1, and then type in 30, 384,000 minus 38,400 gives us 345,600, so 345 meg is our maximum download. So put that the uh, 600. If we come further down, we have the class. You remember I said we had the classes where that drop down menu was and we had service, VoIP, game, remote, world web. This is where on this route you would define the classes, the 10 classes, and each class has a priority. So at the moment, service is potentially gonna be the highest priority, which it is kind of. I'll explain these in a second, but you would have here maybe service. So if you had like an application or something, VoIP and game, which we're interested in the game segment here, you could have a class per game, but I wouldn't recommend that. I just do an overall game class. And you can see some of the classifications. We're not going to go into TCP Vegas. This is to do with collision for packets and with just from congestion, it's just not worth getting involved in. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit complicated. So hopefully you're following this. If not, post any comments and I'll try and help you out. So what we have here is this router already has predefined bandwidth settings. So this is 5% minimum. 100% maximum. So what we're saying is it will always require 5% when the bandwidth is not utilized. But when the bandwidth is being utilized, it will always take 100%. So if, for instance, here VoIP's only got 30%, let's say this service, let's say a web application was competing with VoIP or your game, then the, the service or a web application will always take priority and will take 100% of the bandwidth. Okay, whether it's upload or whether it's download or outbound or inbound, it will take 100%. Your game or voice, for instance, Skype here, for instance, would only ever take 30% of that bandwidth. So it would leave an overhead of 70% that other applications could use. I hope that makes some sense. So for instance, if you wanted your game to always take the maximum amount of bandwidth, what you could do here is potentially just leave that on 5%. doesn't really matter here, but you want to put this at the highest percentage. You want to say it'll always have 100%. And what I would do with the other services is I'd bring them down to somewhere around 70% maybe, which would leave the game with 30% of the bandwidth. Basically, your game will always have at least 30% of your bandwidth to use. So your game will always get this traffic across. But what the sacrifice of that is, I'll leave that 1%. The sacrifice going forward here is that if your game is taking all the traffic, then you'll get packet loss or service degradation on other services. For instance, if you're using Netflix for media, it would drop the packets and they would get buffering or something like that. So that's for outbound. Inbound is exactly the same. Again, I would just set these to 70%. You could do them like a bit more granular, but it depends how far you want to go, if that makes sense. Like I won't get too complicated because it can just be really tricky to manage. So if you've got one service that you want to give priority to, I'd go for your settings, but these mine different and now we're going to be different to what you've got. And you want to set these to something like 70%. So you've always got a bit of overhead for the service you want to give priority to, which for us is game. Okay. Now you're probably saying, well, how does how does it know what game is? Fair point. So on my router, I have to save the settings. Make sure you save your settings. They are going to be slightly different. Once you have your bandwidth settings on, you've defined the class and you've also set how much bandwidth you have by using the speedtest.net. 
You should have something else called classifications. It might be on the same menu, it might not. And in here you'll see all the different rules that work for QoS, quality of service. A little bit complicated, 443, which is web traffic. You can see here, messenger traffic, VoIP and game, or in this circumstance, it's Skype, for instance. And you can see here, you can pick the service itself. So if you've been following my port forwarding tutorials, you will be aware of the ports that you acquire for Fortnite or for Apex. And this is kind of where this is also going to be required for your traffic. To create a new rule, I would come down to the bottom of this classification and click add. And it pops up with this window here, which gives me a blank window. What we have first off is the classification, if you remember where we set it. So we know this one's going to be a game, for instance. So we set it to VoIP or game or whatever you've called your service. We call it VoIP and game. The address. So we could use the destination or source address or the source MAC address. But we're going to use any here because I don't want to specifically lock it down to any PC. We just want to prioritize the traffic. So you could have, for instance, two PlayStations on there, an Xbox and a PlayStation, and they could be using the same ports for something like Apex, Rocket League, something like that. But we are going to do those TCP, UDP, or you can set them individually. You would pick your port. So let's say the destination port. Put your port number in. I'm just going to make this one up. It is one of the ports, 1024. But you have to match that to the port number that you have. We're going to ignore this IPP2 settings. Now, layer seven gives us a list of protocols and ports, basically like Telnet here. We just saw Skype to Skype, which is going to lock out the default ports. It already knows the service. QuickTime. We're just going to ignore that because, again, that would be totally different to what you've got. And we're not going for DSCP classification. Just ignore that. We're also going to leave kilobits per second transferred. The main bit you want to classify here is the port number. UDP or TCP and your service that you've or your classification that you're going to use. And then what we have to do on the right hand side is markets. So let's just call this Fortnite for now. Fortnite one will call it. Now you could call that anything, and this port number might not match the Fortnite one, but you get the idea. Once you add it, then in the table here, the match table, match classification table, or match rule table as they call it, we now know that Fortnite is using destination port 1024. Well, you can have a range like the one above, 1024, and we know that's priority. It can be prioritized with the most bandwidth because we gave it the VoIP game classification. That's it. You'd click save and then monitor your traffic and see if you get an improvement. Now, sorry for this. It's a little bit complicated. It's not the easiest thing to explain, which is probably why no one's done many videos on it. And I hope that was very clear for you. If not, put in the comments some extra questions and I'll try and answer them for you and try and help you out. Or if you want me to try and break it down a bit more, I can certainly do that. So if you find the QoS to be a little bit complicated here, I'm going to do another video because it will take a bit more time as well to do BW limiter, which is down here, which is bandwidth limiter. And that's a slightly simpler version of Quas. It allows us to restrict bandwidth on a certain PC. For instance, like a Netflix PC that someone's watching Netflix on, so it doesn't take all the bandwidth. But it's not intelligent. It'll just limit all its bandwidth to a capped amount. So. It won't care what the traffic is. It'll just say you can only have up to 20 meg. Let's say you've got 100 meg. It'll only ever go up to 20 meg for that PC, leaving you 80 meg for other devices. But if the other PC that you've limited, like the Netflix server needs 21 meg, it won't let it have it and you will get issues. So not as intelligent, but it's a bit easier to set up.